it is I, Ed Bud. Hey guys, Ed Bud here and welcome back to the channel. I've got a packed show for you today, lots of different things to discuss. I've been plowing some more miles into the fuel cell rebels, so I'm going to talk a little bit about those and what I'm going to do with my kind of longer term review. I'm going to be discussing some similarities that I found between the two shoes either side of me. There. Or is it? The Nike Zoom Fly 3 and the A6 Glide Ride. And I also want to ask you, the viewers, for some advice. Which race shoes should I be using for Dorchester Dash 10K on Sunday? Without further ado, let's get to it. So 10 miles today in the New Balance Fuel Cell Rebels, hitting about 7 minutes 30 per mile, came in at about 1 hour 15. So I'm glad to see that my fitness is still there. I've had a couple of weeks really where I've been feeling really congested. Certainly my chest has been feeling a little tight. It's not been right. I've not been 100%, but I really did feel great today. Uh, after a couple of days of some really good quality sleep, I'm back to full fitness. I was really enjoying these today. As you can see, I've put some much shorter laces onto these and they're working out so much better for me. The other thing I've also done is taken the insoles out. It's granted me a little bit more space in the toe box area here. Not too much of a problem on the left shoe, but certainly on the right shoe, my little toe on my uh, right foot was really getting crushed. Um, so it was causing me a bit of discomfort, but certainly taking the insoles out has given me a much better ride. I tell you what, they feel much closer in field now to the Zoom Fly Flyknit. Uh, you know I love those shoes. Uh, I'm still using them from time to time, but certainly I feel like I've got a shoe that's a little bit closer to that. These felt great today at 7 minutes 30 per mile. Just the miles disappeared. I'm really enjoying myself out there. Lots of varied music on the Powerbeats Pro today. We had a little bit of Johnny Marr, uh, his album The Messenger, real favourite of mine. I think this one came out in about 2013, but still on my watch. It's still there, still dig it out occasionally. Really great running music. And recent release from Edwin Collins. This is a really great album. So good to see Edwin back recording some fantastic music. I've been a fan of his for a long, long time since uh, back in the days of uh, the Gorgeous George album. And I pretty much think I've got everything he's done since then, but love Edwin, what a great guy. So do check those out if you get a chance, some fantastic albums there. If you're into that kind of alternative guitar music, you can't go wrong with either of those. Pretty famished after the run. I think it's gonna be a pizza day. That side, I do not bow to any sponsor. I love those bars. Where's the shoe gone? I've lost a shoe. I can't find one of the shoes I need. Aha. So, I wanted to talk a little bit today about some similarities that I found between the A6 Glide Ride and the Zoom Fly 3. I just want to make it very clear, some of you think I've been a little bit mean to the Zoom Fly 3 and I feel I may have gone over the top a little bit. I am sorry. You're not a bad shoe. It's not a bad shoe. So bizarrely, these two shoes share some similarities and I'd like to go through those today with you. I think the Glide Ride's got quite a specific use case really. Um, most people are gonna probably pass on this shoe, um, but I was quite intrigued as to the quite pronounced curve there at the front of the shoe. Maybe this shoe could help me out if I was gonna be seeking some much longer, slower pace miles. I really don't think this thing matches up against something like the Pegasus 36 or the Pegasus Turbo 2. It's just a totally different shoe, totally different use case. But in terms of weight, price point, and technology, these two shoes, certainly share the same bunk bed. So I've been enjoying the glide ride of runs about six miles upwards, uh, paces of around 7.30 to about eight minutes per mile. I think you kind of get into a groove of that kind of pace with this shoe. And there's certainly some similarities there to something like the Hoka Oni Oni Carbon X, or perhaps the original version of the Zoom Fly. I know the weight's quite different, but I think that those two shoes kind of give you an idea of what this shoe could be like. That kind of falling forward feel that you get on toe off with the Zoom Fly is certainly here in the Glide Ride. I can see runners who kind of favor that ASICS kind of very present upper, that kind of cushioned and highly constructed sort of shoe, really enjoying this one. I think probably the closest thing in terms of the feel that you get of this shoe, rather than the upper, but that of the midsole and the uh, outsole, aside from that very sort of present upper, that highly cushioned sort of upper, I think the closest thing that's around at the moment in terms of the on-foot feel and the midsole, the outsole, is probably the Zoom Fly 3. Now I know that the Zoom Fly 3, it's got that Vapor Weave upper, 
um, but there's a lot of material there around your foot and I do feel some similarities between the um, kind of curved nature at the front of the shoe uh, to the glide ride. I might, you might call me crazy, you might say I've completely lost my mind and you could be right. I found with a sort of midfoot strike that you get a very similar kind of feeling to the glide ride in the Zoom Fly 3. I do think it feels different in terms of the glide ride that is to the Hoka Carbon X. Despite that curve at the front of the shoe, I feel the ride's very, very different in those two shoes. I think perhaps the glide ride somewhere in the middle between the Zoom Fly 3 and the Carbon X. I really don't think anyone's going to be racing in this shoe though. It's considerably heavier than even the Zoom Fly 3. That tongue's very, very padded. <laughs> which results in a really good lockdown feeling on top of the foot. The Zoom Fly 3's got that kind of collar going around the top of the forefoot and that neoprene type tongue substitute going up the very front of the forefoot. So some real considerable differences there. Now they've both got ridiculously long laces, although the, the ones in the A6 aren't quite as kind of springy and stretchy. As you know, I was a big fan of the Zoom Fly Flyknit. I found the React in that is very, very different in the midsole to that of the Zoom Fly 3. I think the midsole on the glide ride's just that little bit softer, that sort of sandwich they've got here of foams, just is that little bit more forgiving. You still feel the density of the foam in the Zoom Fly 3 midsole, but the glide ride's just that bit more springy. It feels like it's returning a little bit more of the energy that you're putting in. I think that foam in the glide ride, it just feels like it's kind of forcing that propulsion a little bit more. I just didn't really feel the same feeling with the Zoom Fly 3 as I did with the Flyknit version. I don't know whether it's the drop, maybe the drop's different, but I think the formulation of React is different. I think probably in wetter weather, the Zoom Fly 3 is going to be the better of the two shoes. I can see the glide ride absorbing quite a lot of water. There's lots of upper there. There's quite a lot of padding. The water's only going to get absorbed by that upper. That Zoom Fly 3 just isn't going to get as wet, I think, on foot during a race or kind of training run situation as the glide ride. Let's talk about outsole grip. So testing this out this week and towards the tail end last week, it's getting really wet outside now. Typical kind of October conditions in the UK. Loads and loads of rain, loads of moisture, and people are starting to come down with a dreaded lurgy. There's slugs, there's beasties on the floor, there's puddles of mud and leaves. I think you get the picture. The glide ride's really been great on trails, on paths, no issues on pavements whatsoever. These things really are champion acorn crushers. You can totally obliterate those little green fellas. They just get smashed to bits. I think the Zoom Fly 3 is really aimed at roads and pavements rather than anything else. That rubber area at the very front of the forefoot is fine on those types of conditions, it's fine on those types of terrains, but I think it could get pretty slippery on any grassy areas. So at around £145 for the glide ride and about 120 at the moment for the Zoom Fly 3, which do I think kind of presents the better value in this sort of use case? Well. In fairness, I think they're quite different use cases. The sensation's similar um, between the two shoes, but I think there's vastly different utilization. I think it's gonna be longer mid-paced runs for the A6 Glide Ride and faster tempo efforts in the Zoom Fly 3. I think you can race in the Zoom Fly 3. I don't see any reason why not. Around right about that price point, I think it's actually quite an attractive shoe for a lot of people. I just feel that the Glide Ride's just a little bit too heavy for the purpose of racing. If you've got any opinions or comments about the Glide Ride and the Zoom Fly 3 in terms of performance or feel, please pop them below. I'm always keen to see your comments. You know I try to respond to as many as I possibly can, as quickly as I can. I do value your comments, viewers. So last bit of the show today, on Sunday, you know I like a little 10K race, I'm gonna head across to the Dorchester Dash. It's pretty close by, only takes around about half an hour for me to get over to Dorchester from Yeovil. So the Dorchester Dash, 6.2 miles, 10K race, with approximately 2.5K of that race on grass. There's some kind of trail sections thrown into that grass part that I've just talked about. Um, there's some elevation, a couple of small hills to navigate, but the rest of the race is on pavements. So viewers, I'm asking for your advice. What do you think I should use in terms of footwear? First things that sprung to mind for me was possibly a trail shoe. I've got the Scott Speedtrack 2s, which I'm currently testing out. I also have the Terra Kyger 5s. Both of those would probably be pretty useful in those types of conditions. But then again, I've got 7.5 kilometers of the race, which is all on pavements. Do I really want to use a trail-based shoe 
on those types of surfaces? Probably not. So again, I thought maybe the Pegasus Turbo 2. I can probably just kind of suck it up, you know, going across the grass sections, going on the elevations. It's going to be a bit muddy. It's not going to be ideal, but then I've got a really light and fast shoe to use on the rest of the race. Probably not go with the Vapor Flies. I mean, I don't mind using the Crimson pair that I've got. There's, you know, over 150 miles on those now. I'm not too precious about them. In fact, I'm not really precious about any of the shoes. I'm happy to use them. Um, let me know what do you think I should use for the race on Sunday. Please comment below. Right guys, it's pizza time. Time for me to sign off. Thanks for watching through to the end of the video. Please remember to subscribe. Hit that down there if you haven't already. Give the video the thumbs up. Please remember to share the video with other runners or anybody that might find the video particularly enjoyable. Don't forget to watch somewhere tomorrow. It's the Ineos 159 Challenge to see if Alip Kachoge can get in under that two hour mark on the marathon distance. I'm very excited about it, gonna set my alarm. I'll be up with some croissants and a nice cup of coffee or something. Um, so I'll be watching, I hope you'll be watching too. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.